uh, the story and the characters so we have an idea of what we want you know the 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 voice to be like. We never hire anybody to put on voices. At Pixar, I always look for things being natural. I went to, as the audience watching our movies, it just kind of sort of, it's real, it's natural. Even though it's toys or bugs or monsters or cars talking, you just want to feel like it's natural. It's just happening. And so, so we look for the, the actor, number one, that they're a really good actor. Number two, that they have a voice or a personality um, in, that we've seen in many movies that lends itself to the character. And then, um, and, the, and what we do, which is very interesting, uh, is that we'll take a scene from a movie or a TV show that, of an actor we're interested in, and we'll take just their voice, and we'll put it up um, against, we, we cut a little piece of, you know, on, on the Avid, um, or final cut, we'll, we'll put um, some drawings of the characters that we have, or even an early model or something, computer model of the character, and we'll put those, the voices up against it to see how it sounds. And it's a very, very interesting thing, is that there's many actors who are brilliant actors, really great, but when you take their physical acting away and just listen to their voice, two things happen. Either it will fall flat, it'll, it'll not be as lively or punchy, or the opposite happens, it just jumps off the screen. And that's something to us that, that, that we are always looking for. And it's a very interesting technique because it really works. You really look at it. And then we do what we call Pixar non sequitur theater. We, um, we take and we cut because uh, most of the times, you know, our movies are about relationships and we want the, the voices to be, to kind of work. And a lot of actors' voices are in the same, same tonal register, right? And they kind of, who said that? Is it this guy or that guy? And you don't want that to happen. You want to have a clear distinction between the voices. And so we'll cut, you know, dialogue back and forth and, you know, from two different movies. And so we don't really care that they're, what they're saying doesn't make any sense. It's just we want to hear the voices. But sometimes it's the most hilarious scenes you've ever seen. It's just the most non sequitur stuff. And the, the last thing we look at is, um, is the, um, is I love to get actors who can ad-lib, make something their own. Oftentimes you get, you know, the, if they just read kind of the script the way it is, the writer or us in the story department or something like that will write something that's maybe not quite the way Tom Hanks would say something or, or, or Owen Wilson or Paul Newman. And I encourage them to sort of take what's written or the meaning of it and kind of reword it the way that they, that they say, because I want it to sound just perfectly natural. When you're in an um, art form that takes four years to make something, spontaneity is not something that just goes hand in hand with animation, except in the recording studio. And it's very important to, to me to get spontaneity. And, I, uh, and so we've since, I've gotten really excited about working with actors that can ad lib. You know, uh, Owen Wilson is fantastic. Tom Hanks is, is amazing. Uh, it's the voice of Woody the Cowboy in the Toy Story movies. We would, anytime Woody touches something, I make sure there was a, a prop that doesn't make any sound and I hand it to him. And that guy just comes up with ideas. In Toy Story, there's a scene where, um, where Buzz's arm gets broken, kind of his severed arm, and he has to do a puppet show um, with his severed arm to sort of pretend to the Andy's toys that, that Buzz is still alive, right? So I gave, I, my son's had this kind of fake arm that you slam in car doors and stuff like that, and I took it to Tom, <laughs> and I handed it to him, and I sw swear, I still have the kind of videotape of, of the run he did about, about five, 10 minutes of just the most hilarious stuff of with this fake arm. And it was, uh, it was fantastic. But that's what we love. Bonnie Hunt is one we used in three, three movies. She uh, has a lead role in Cars. And she just, I mean, she's one of the greatest ad-lib comedians of our time. It's great. And I think the final thing we do is we actually um, always uh, look, and if we really like someone, and I look and I see if they have kids, I know we have them. Because <laughs> I know they love our movies, and I know that they, for their kids, they would be a hero if they were in one of our movies. So I sort of like, <laughs> and I look and I go, nope, single. I go, ah. <laughs> Well, Alejandro, I mean, you, you had the, the perfect cast in Bobble. When did you, knew, did you know that, was, that that was the cast that was going to work when you started this picture? Did you imagine that you'd get these folks? Um, well, it was, uh, in, in the case of Babel, it was a very 
very extreme situation compared to 21 grams on Amores Perros. In this case, I knew that I was going to face the reality of the, you know, the, what it was available in these countries, which I didn't know well. So um, in the case, I, I, I had already, I thought about Gael always, and, and, and Brad, and Kate, and Adriana, who has, Adriana Barraza, which plays Amelia, who has worked with me in, in Amores Perros as a, a small role as a mother of Ga, uh, Gael. But rather than uh, beyond the, these four actors, I have to find all the other characters around the world. And, and I, I think what, uh, what John is, is saying is very interesting for me. I think the voice is very important for me too. You, have, you can have sometimes great faces, but the voice is horrible. And it's completely detached from what the character should, should, should feel, should hear. And I try to close my eyes and imagine that when it doesn't work, doesn't work. And um, something that I always I'm looking for is for um, I'm calling the interior life of a character, of, of a person. I, I always feel that if somebody has some, uh, I will say, interior or spiritual life in a way that I can feel that there, there's some gravity in him, there's some range, I will call this like, um, you know, when I'm talking with the actors or I'm getting just close to them to know them and to pitch them the role, and I can feel that they have this emotional baggage inside them, in the reality that they can be attached to not particularly that emotion that the character will run through the film, but something that they can be close to that kind of emotion. If something has happened in their life that they can go inside themselves and pick something and then that, you know, convert that in something that I know that it will work, that's enough for me. And I can see that in their eyes, to tell you the truth. In, in that, uh, there's some gravity that you can feel in the eyes of a, or a superficial actor or somebody who has, uh, you know, gravity. In this case, in, in Babel, uh, I went to Morocco and I tried to, to, you know, to look at the film industry actors that were there. And unfortunately, all these actors were from a very, you know, they were mostly, t you know, working in, in, in TV and soap opera. So they were having a lot of habits from the TV and it wasn't working for me. And the skins were very very, uh, you know, for the urban cities, Casablanca and, and cities like that, and I was shooting in the south of the Sahara, so I need these, 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 these faces that really can show me the sun and the desert in their faces. So uh, 17 days before, I end up deciding that I will look for uh, people in the streets. So we went, all the team, we went to the towns, 